All right, what's going on guys? Aaron here back from the Remote Closing Academy YouTube channel and also the first episode of the Remote Closing Academy podcast. So I am super stoked for this episode because we recorded this and I kid you guys not, you're gonna get a ton of value out of this. You're gonna learn all about today's guest's story, how he, you know, with 10 kids, seven horses, you know, being able to build an entire business around remote closing, right? So he took a lot of the strategies and the different things that he learned from his past while also, you know, simultaneously integrating a lot of the content and a lot of the strategies that we taught him within the Remote Closing Academy to then just make that, you know, that second season of his life within, you know, more of the remote sales world uh, to make it as, as good as it could be. So without further ado, guys, we're gonna jump into the episode a ton of nuggets I, I would highly recommend to pull out a sheet of paper take down some notes because we went over a ton in this episode so hope you guys enjoy see you guys on the other side welcome to the podcast and uh, how's how's the day so far yeah i gotta tell you today's excellent make connections make moves i'm i'm i feel like a million bucks and if it kind of sounds cheesy but it's like that top of the world feeling Good man. Yeah, I'm I'm stoked to to kind of dive into like your story and and kind of where you come from and stuff. So let's uh you know with that being said, let's just kind of jump into it. You know, I I always like to re rewind the clocks when I you know talk to people like this, and and really just get a more of like your background, even like before you got into sales, because you know obviously we we're gonna talk a lot about the sales side and the program and how you jumped in and and things like that. But let's just rewind the clocks like before you even got into sales. Like what were you doing before before all that? Before all that, well, you know, the very nit and gritty was I grew up really poor, um, like a lot of the nation today. Uh, on paper, I should not be where I'm at. Um, but I hate to sound, you know, cocky, but because of me, I was able to really take the bull by the horns, um, that, that bull called life that wants to throw you and inevitably into the abyss. Um, I was able to really grab a hold of that and uh, direct it to the goals that I wanted to achieve. Um, so my background, yeah, really poor. Uh, did a lot of manual labor through for a lot of years. Um, actually, a plumber. Um, and then I figured that there was a different way for me and my lifestyle. There was a there was an actual turning point. Um, in my life where I went from grinding daily, uh, carrying cast iron pipes, uh, soldering joints, burning my arms and hands. Um, and I turned, when we started adopting children, my wife and I made the decision that, you know, uh, we had a big house, our children were getting older, they were moving out, um, our biological children. Um, that we wanted to like make a difference in the community. So we, we became foster parents. Um, and mm. it was, it was really my intention wasn't to change the world. My intention as a foster parent was to light a spark to so show a child um, that there is a home in this country that the entire family meets at five o'clock and has dinner and discusses their day and, helps them, you know, with whatever challenges, whether it be academic or social and emotional issues that they're having for the day. So it was just that spark. Um, I absolutely fell in love with it. Um, we started to adopt. Uh, we didn't want babies. Babies kind of suck. And they stay up all night. You know, they're really Dude, cute. But... I have three. I have three under three right now. So I, I definitely, I feel yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and we started off with a sibling group, three little boys. Um, and you know, I, I have an adoption from, uh, I think maybe eight years ago, um, I adopted a little boy, um, and started off with a sibling group of, of three, um, and great little boys, uh, you know, they all absolutely imperfectly perfect, uh, uh, just, you know, good challenge, good challenges, you know, like a challenge yeah. that you want to have as a parent, um, elected to have as a parent. Um, then inevitably there was another baby and then about a year later there was another baby and that first baby that I held in my arms was the the moment was the holding her through withdrawal and holding her through uh, the struggles that she was going through um, the addictions I 
changed my life. I said, I'm not going to work as a plumber. I'm not leaving my family. I'm not, I'm not going to do this anymore. There has to be a, I was drinking beer every night, you know, uh, I would just try to cope with the muscle aches and, and, you know, just the stress of the job and, you know, not all the people, but some of the people were difficult to work with. Um, so I decided right then and there that this was the time in my life that I was going to make a change. And that's when I, you know, I've always done sales kind of part-time with the plumbing, you know, jewelry stores, uh, 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 plumbing parts and materials. Um, and I got into sales and I got into outside sales. So I started selling roofs, started selling gutters um, for a, a big company around here. Very good, very, very good big company. Um, great owner, great staff, uh, just a real nice tick, nice tight community. There's a lot of driving. There's a lot out of the house. There's a lot of, um, you know, being away from the family, which wasn't my intention. My intention was, Hey, uh, I want to be closer to my family, but having such a big family, um, you are beholden to this responsibility of providing for that family. Um, a, you got to provide for yourself because if you can't afford to put a suit on your back, if you can't afford to put shoes on your feet, you can't afford to provide for anybody. You have to be able to take care of yourself. So I was like, how am I going to do this? How am I going to figure this out? I said to myself, you know, let's explore this. Let's see what the best options are. Um, started, you know, like everybody else do a little bit of Google search, watch a whole bunch of videos on, uh, on YouTube, ran across quite a few influencers, something about Cole really resonated with me, you know, like he's, he spoke the truth. And as you know, you know, I hate to keep bringing it up like a, a record on repeat, but as a parent, you know, when someone's lying. You know, yeah. when someone's you, your bullshit detectors are up, right? <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? And there was like this approach. And I started, I'm not the guy to do this. I am not the guy to click the yes button. Here's my credit card. Put me on the system. You know yeah. what I mean? For some jack wagon on the internet. <laughs> it's, it's not me. You know what I mean? But there was something there. There was an underlying of truth that's undeniable. Um, mm. I started implementing right away, I dove right in. I, I gave an inhuman amount of effort, uh, watched, you know, hours of the, of the training process, um, tried to deeply, didn't just watch it, rewound it, watch it again, understood it. You know, is this, is this really what it is? Started mm. to understand that there's a philosophy, that there's a system, there's a method to this madness that, that's called sales. Um, it started to put all that together, started implementing it in my day to day, instantly saw a revenue increase in just my day to day outside sales gig. Mm -hmm. um, was able to land in just a few short weeks. I know this isn't really, it doesn't really apply to everybody. Okay. Mm -hmm. But um, I saw the beauty of this course be able to take you from an actual dud to a bona fide stud. You know what mm. I mean? Like you were able to go from a zero, really cheesy, cheesy line, go from a zero to a hero. You know what I mean? But we were able to do that. You know, we were able to get, um, get you, get you to where you want to be. And in my case, I was able to land a very good gig at a very reputable company with absolutely stellar bosses. And they compensate me very well for being an A-class salesman. Dude, you get you literally gave me so much more, like you basically answered my first five questions just right off the bat. So, um, dude, I, I love that story. And and I, I do wanna take a little bit of a step back though because there's a couple things that you mentioned that I think a lot of people would get would, would take some, you know, take some some notes on. Like when you when you made that transition from, let's say like the, I wouldn't say nine to five, but you know, the, doing more like the outside sales stuff into like the remote closing side of things. Um, you know, I'm sure a lot of people are, I, I know when I was making the transition from nine to five into, you know, something that was a little bit more remote, more commission based, like there, there was a lot of fear there, right? So like how, 
you know, obviously the family is, is a huge motivator. It was the same thing for me, right? I knew that I had, you know, two kids on the way and it was like, I, there's no, there's no choice. It's like, I put in the work and provide for my family and, and that's it, right? There wasn't, there was another side. So, you know, what, what was that outside of the family stuff? Like, what do you think were some of those motivators or, or things that kind of kept you on the ball to make sure that like you made your success inevitable? So for me, um, and I got to agree with you 100% that you and I are in an airplane, okay? We're 15,000 feet, okay? The doors open up. I'm in a perfectly freaking good airplane, brother. I'm on, on my back is no parachute, but there's a real serious ground on the other side. And I jumped and I created my parachute as I went down. Hmm. I, I brought all this together. Um, as scary as leaving my nine to five, to go into the RCA program and go hundred percent full remote, mm-hmm. still jumping out of that perfectly good airplane, still, you know, scared to death, scared cat and all the way down. Yeah. You know what I mean? And creating, believing in myself, um, believing in the system, believing in the process helped me get past that to see a light at the end of the tunnel. And really you don't, you don't stop freaking out until you're securely planted in a gig. So you're always freaking out, but that's the same as when I left the very first plumbing company that I worked for to go work for the second plumbing company that I worked for, for 16 years. You know what I mean? It was that still kind of scared cat. Hey, this is a different color truck. Oh my God, new area. You know what I mean? Like, like, the same feeling it's the, the same feeling as if if your business shuts down if your company shuts down if if your if your job just goes away uh you break a leg and all of a sudden your job as a as a line dancer you can't you don't have it no more you know what i mean yeah. so like <laughs> it's like you know it, it's kind of one of these things that can happen will happen but what i wanted to do my goal was to build a more lucrative and more flexible and liquid uh, space in the, in any industry. Um, Sales just happens to be my thing. I like sales. I feel comfortable around it. Um, It takes a certain individual to be able to do that. It's not made for everyone. It's not tailor made for everybody. You have to be adventurous, but I wanted, I saw where we were trending, where we were going viral. Um, where the market is leaning, um, you know, was I the quickest one to jump on? No. Was I the last one to jump on? Definitely not. You know what I mean? Um, but I'm kind of right here in the middle in the mix with everybody. And we are as consumers buying more online. We are more comfortable today than any other time in the history of this planet, buying things without actually tangibly being, being able to touch them. We want to buy, we want to have experiences over anything. So if I'm able to, you know, reach out and bridge that gap from what that customer wants to my product, which is what the customer needs. Okay. And is going to complete that. My job is to make those connections. My job is to bridge that gap. Very simple job. When you lay it out like that, Definitely need high quality educators to get you to be proficient at it. Um, and you need to be able to, you know, pick your gurus. Um, not saying Cole's a guru. I mean, he does got the beard, but. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's one of the, the prerequisites, right? <laughs> Having the beard. I think so. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I think there, there's a couple of things. Cause like, you know, obviously we, we talked about a lot about the story and, and, but you, you did mention a couple of things about like, you know, even the, you know, bridging that gap, right? Like a lot of within the training, I can hear a lot of what you're saying, like just some overlap between like, you know, the, the, you know, Cole talks a lot about like heaven Island versus hell Island, like where, like where, where do we create that gap between those two things? So, you know, talking a little bit about some of the, the training stuff that you've, you, you've gone through and you were talking about how, you know, you were able to uh, even incorporate some of the training into the, you know, the sales job you were doing before. What were some of your like, maybe like either favorite parts of the training or like biggest takeaways that, that you think that someone that is a salesperson right now could, could really benefit from? Like any, any major takeaways that you, that you can remember specifically? 
<laughs> Absolutely, 100%. Number one, number one is when I came in here, he was like script, but no script. I was like, what is this guy talking about? What is he talking about? What do you, the, my favorite movie was scripted. My favorite television show was scripted. Every book, obviously scripted. Okay. Everything that ever got a reaction from me besides like organically, but anything that I watched in media or whatever was all, you know, scripted. And he, what Cole really helped like this and em- Epiphany moment is that his epiphany? Uh, the epiphany. the moment of epiphany, yeah. So the 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 epiphany, right, was Cole explaining it to the point where it clicked in my head that this is a philosophy. This is greater than any script. This is the tools internally way beyond what any smoke and mirrors or any shiny object is going to get you. This is the brass tacks. This is what it's all about. It's about these core fundamental principles, mastering them and building on them. If you don't have a good foundation, even your outdoor shit house will fall. And I'm trying to build a skyscraper. Love it, man. That's uh that that's super super impactful because it's not you know I think a lot of people try to they try to focus a lot on like you know what are these like massive like game changer things and and even though you know it, it has changed the game for you it's not anything that's like crazy profound right it's just like focus on the simple stuff that you know that you need to anyway but get become a master at that at that craft even if it's you know just the, the simple things um, you know I think we've we've talked a lot about like you know, what are, what are some of the, the, the good things, but like, what were maybe some of the, if you ran into any, maybe like bottlenecks within like either jumping into the program or like any difficult parts that, that you found where you're just like, man, like what's happening here, right? Like any, any, like any bottlenecks that hit that you might even, you know, someone that's coming through the program might even like hit as well. Like any, anything that you can think of. To be honest, it's so eloquently laid out it is dummy proof. The biggest bottleneck for me was allocating time. So I did this between the hours of nine o'clock at night, nine 30, when the kids went to bed till like one o'clock in the morning. Um, then I went to sleep and I woke up at six and, you know, had my daily walk, my cup of coffee and went on, did my thing. Um, and I allocated that time that way. And I think that because I'm not too much of a night owl, that was probably like the biggest hurdle. Um, But it's more than just logging on to Kajabi and um, and, and, and going through some text and and, uh, some Google Docs. And and then, you know, hey, let me watch this video where every single last one of them, hey, it's Cole here. You know, like, hey, it's Cole yeah. here is echoing in my head, okay? <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's, it's, uh, it's way more than that. It's, I cannot, I, I know this is going to sound cheesy, man, but it's a freaking family. It's not a community. Uh, Corey is amazing. He's a young guy. And I'm, I look at him like he's not even one of my peers, bro. He's like one of my kids. You know what I mean? <laughs> but he has this knowledge that's just beyond his years. You know what I mean? And and when he went to Ascension and came back, it was like a different Corey. It was like a Corey that's floating two inches above the ground and glowing. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was like it, questions, like real high, high level questions, mm-hmm. getting into the nitty gritty breaking down sales calls um really um so the program helps you understand and define your problem areas the community helps you fine tune and polish your presentation um handling objections before they even come across uh building those action levels building building that that confidence that trust and security because as cole said we're we're in the post-trust era you know what i mean like nobody trusts anybody 
it's now more necessary than ever to have that support and to have that education. Um, you basically got a PhD in making shit happen. <laughs> there That's we go. The best way I can put it. Yeah. Yeah, man. I, I think like it's it's really cool because I've been a part of like so many like programs in the past, whether it was like for, for my own, like, you know, whether it was a coach, right. Uh, it's a funny story. Um, I used to like, I've known Corey for years and, uh, he, I was actually his coach, um, in one of the first programs. Like that's when I met him. I was like, a, I was a success coach in this old programs, but you know, to, to make that point is, you know, I think there's, there's a lot of people that like to say like, Oh yeah, like welcome to the family or like we're building a community or a family, but it, it's a, it's a completely other thing to like have the infrastructure in place and like the people and the, and, and the ones that are there to actually build it out as a family, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so, so let's, let's talk a little bit about, you know, you come through RCA and, and you know, you, you get landed in the gig. Um, obviously we don't have to go into like specifics, um, you know, uh, specifically of the company or whatnot, but like what, I guess, what was your experience of coming to the program? Um, you know, finding that gig, like how did all that kind of come to come to fruition? Okay. Yeah. I obviously can't go into too much. Um, I have an NDA, you know what I mean? Um, but that process was scary fast. It was, it was comforting and scary fast at the same time. I don't know how else I could put it, but two oxymorons come crashing together. Uh, scary fast, super comforting. Hey, I'm actually going to make something of this. Um, damn, am I going to make something of this? And yeah. they just collide. You know what I mean? It's, it's like the hydron collider at Zern, right? And so like, <laughs> we're just, we're just smashing some shit together, at really high speeds. Um, if you want to take the time to slowly go through the course, take the time, slowly go through the course. That's where you're at. Um, if you want to put in the crazy amount of effort to really drive those growths quickly and efficiently then do that that's you um there's plenty of people on the side of this training that um are kind of sp spontaneous uh they just know in the back of their head what it is what they're going to do they they run like that i'm on the other side of the spectrum I believe that success occurs when opportunity meets preparation. Okay. We've all heard that. That's it's written on my wall. Do you know what I mean? So above my desk is a thousand notes is uh, rebuttal scripts, da, 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 and tools I could pull out of my pocket. Um, generalizations of, okay. So if we're going down this road, um, get them back on track, get, this going this way, ask these questions to get them back on track. This Socratic method is, it takes spin selling to a whole nother level, okay? It, it really does, it really does. Um, did I kind of lose track of the initial question? Like, I feel no. like there's a part of it that I'm missing. Uh, no, no, no. I was just, you know, wondering like, overall, like, because we can't talk too much about the, the specific opportunity, but, you know, just how how quickly everything came to fruition from, like, just jumping in. Because, I mean, how how long was it? Was it, like, a month when you, from the time you came in until, like, getting that job? Because I remember, I think it was looking yeah, it was like, May days. 6th, yeah, May 16th or something, you made, like, your intro video in the group, and then it was, like, a couple days ago. It was just like, hey got placed, you know, talking to my new, you know, to the new gig. So, um, yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't even post that timely. I waited a couple of days oh, really? just to make sure they didn't back out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, you, it's safe to say you got the gig. So <laughs> yeah, no, I, I got the gig and I got to tell you, it's a really good company. It's a really good business. Um, uh, the owners are third, <sighs> how to say this without sounding weird, but they're guys that you can actually have a glass of Budweiser with. You could have a beer with these guys. Like they're genuine dudes. They're not above anybody. You know what I mean? They they're approachable. They're, you could, you could talk to them. They're not cocky. They're, they're just like you and I 
um, and they have a great product that has to get out to market. My job is bridging that, bridging that product. You know what I mean? The, the product is a course. Okay. So you sell a course. Um, the, it, the greatest part about this is I was actually able to land with a company that has a course, it has a product that not only is it marketable, but it's a hundred percent honest. It a hundred percent works. There's no smoke and mirrors. There's no, no, uh, uh, shiny object that you have to grab onto, or, or, you know, like that's, that's, that's levitating you towards this, this one thing. No, no, no. It's brass tacks. Do this consistently. Bang. You're mm -hmm. on. And it's also in the field that I like. We're talking about business. You know what I mean? Um, I am a, this might turn some people off, but I'm a libertarian. Okay. I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. I believe that if you want to make change, you have to do it yourself. You have to do it for yourself. Okay. So with that, I am a business owner. I am an entrepreneur. I own my business. I have my stake in the ground and I take control of my destiny and future. I am not in a rudderless uh, craft. I am heading to achieve my financial goals. My financial goals are high. The expectations of myself are high. And the, uh, the acceptability of bullshit is low. Okay? But I've been the first one to bag and move on to the next one. Well, I think Biggie Small said, wreck and buy a new one. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so that's, that's what I do. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, man. No, there's one, one thing that you even said in there that I, I, I want to get a little bit more, more from you on is like, or may, maybe even not, just, just making the point because I, I think it's, it's super important is uh, I think a lot of people have, like when we're talking about like remote closing, right? Or, or remote sales or high ticket sales. I think just the word sales just automatically gets like that, that negative, like, you know, use car salesman like vibe, right? It's like anytime someone hears sales, they're like, ah, no, like I don't want to, I don't want to hear anything about that. But, um, you know, when you're talking about like, you know, the, the thing that you're able to sell, right. The, the course to help people not only like implement and, and, you know, but take action on, but also like see real results and, and make like actual impact within their lives. Right. And that's like, to me, you know, in, in the remote sales world, it becomes not even like, not even a job at that point. Right. It's just like, you're literally all you're doing is helping people and you're helping people as a byproduct. They're making more money. You're making more money. And it's like, it's, it, it's all a perfect, uh, it's a perfect song and dance to, you know, to, to really make it, um, you know, easy for you to wake up, right? You're not going to a job that you hate every single day, you know? Um, Everything, so, don't mean to cut you off. No, you're good. But I, th I think it's good to put this point in here is that everything you have done since you were able to talk has been selling. It's, it's, it's like this taboo concept that I just don't understand. Is my beard gray? It bothers me because I'm old, you know what I mean? <laughs> but you know what? I'm still good. I, I grow this gr this gray beard in honor and honor and in tribute to all my friends that died and were never able to grow a gray beard. You know what I mean? I got my hair dread. You're gonna say that's a that's a bad thing? You know what I mean? Like oh dread. Oh boy, I'm in sales, man. I'm a salesman. This is my profession. This is my craft. You know what I mean? If, if you don't like sales for any taboo reason for, for whatever it is, you, you're, then it, it's not for you. That's it. That's what it is, man. Like, uh, oh, I couldn't possibly do sales. Well, what the heck do you think you're doing behind the counter at TJ Maxx? You're peddling their wear. Here at RCA, I'm peddling me. No matter what product I'm selling, I am selling myself, my skill set, my ability my wisdom, my intelligence, my past history, my experience, my training, every dollar I put into me, that's what I'm selling. Why am I selling me? To support my lifestyle. I couldn't think of the money going to a better place than me. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, you know what I mean? We can we can literally drop it, uh, mic drop on on that one, dude. I I have literally agree with with every single one of those points. It's um, you know, if if you don't want to get into sales, like then don't <laughs> save the commission for the rest of us. <laughs> so so last two questions, man. Like 
So what would you, and this is a question that I think, you know, we'll, we'll try to ask on every podcast, but like, what would you say to someone that let's say they have gone through that, you know, they've seen Cole a couple times, they keep getting smacked with our ads, right? Like, what would you say to someone that is on the fence of jumping in? Maybe they're just like, you know, I, I don't know if I should trust another guru or is this going to work? Or like, what, what would you say to, to that person to, to make them not, not convince them, but to, to let them know that it's, it's going to be the best choice for them. Okay. One. What decisions have you been making in the fa- in the past that got you in the position that you are in today? Are you happy in the position that you are in today? If you're happy in the position that you are in, then don't take a single stroke forward. Do not take a single step. Stay where you are. If you feel like there is something better, something greater out there, and this is what resonates inside you, don't be weenie. Don't be hesitant. Don't be the one guy on the cliff overlooking the crystal blue waters who refuses to jump in because you don't know what's underneath the glare. Okay. Two. Probably. If your revenue is not at the dollar amount, not where it needs to be and you are struggling and you're you're really living paycheck to paycheck and you can't you can't afford to put shoes on your own feet you know um you really need to take a hard look at at what you what you did to get there and and what you're going to do to get out and if you're looking at other people stop it Stop looking at other people. Stop looking at what they got. I believe that jealousy is actually kind of a good thing. You know what I mean? Because that guy in the shiny red Porsche down the street or my buddy with the black Lamborghini, um, you know, what's going to, I want one of those. I don't mm-hmm. fit in them. I'm six foot three, <laughs> you know, 200, 230 pounds. You know what I mean? But I don't fit in them, but I still want one. You know what I mean? But well, how am I going to get it? I'm going to make a better me. I'm going to make a more profitable. I'm going to make a more sellable. I'm going to make a more tangible me. Um, if you're on that that ledge of of uh, you know living paycheck to paycheck, you can't put a down payment on a hot dog. That's not going to change. The one percent make decisions like the one percent. I think that this goes, this is probably the most under, underappreciated aspect of the whole thing. There's a reason why they're 1% is because they make decisions that only 1% of us make. The other 99% of us rinse, wash, repeat the same failing structure, the same failing principles that we've been implementing our entire lives. If you want to be the night, make the 99% choice, make the clear, easy, you know, tangible choice. But life isn't going to just present itself. Life is going to beat your ass, man. As Sisyphus, so he was condemned to a lifetime of, of rolling a, a giant boulder up the hill. Struggle, struggle, struggle. His mindset is what changed the script up. He said, I'm going to make rolling this ball up the hill my thing. I'm going to find a way back down this hill faster than the last time I did it. I'm going to work different muscle groups. I'm going to have the body of Olympus. So when the gods came back to look at Sisyphus, they were expecting to see a miserable, beat up old man. What they found was a lively, muscular, just specimen rolling this damn ball up the hill with a smile on his face. So yeah yeah grab life by the goddamn horns man are you gonna be the dude that's gonna sit back and be like oh how come how come i got you know uh i got a three-figure bank account it means i got 101 dollars and one cent or are you gonna be the dude that looks at that and goes i got 101 dollar one cent how do i turn this into a million dollars it's about your perspective it's hard to get jaded in RCA. It's hard to get off 
your balance in RCA. When I first signed up, I got email. Hey, man, no, you're scared. I'm not scared. <laughs> hey, man, uh, you know, it, it could get challenging. Never got challenged. You know what I mean? I challenged myself. You know what I mean? I, I was like, how fast am I going to make this happen? Uh, but the, the, to know that you have that community out there and you can see where other people might get a little wiggly. But when you're driving that vehicle fast and you hit those corners hard, you're going to get wiggly. This gives you the experience to correct. This gives you the experience to keep yourselves pretty side up on the track. Too many analogies? Was I good? Dude, no, <laughs> so, so good. We get like, I mean, I know I said it a second ago, but we can just drop it there. Like that was like so, so many different things. And it's, it's analogies that, um, for me, like when I, when I first jumped into, you know, even my first program, like I put the, I'll never forget, um, Brian, actually, it's, it's so funny how much overlap there is between some of us, but Brian, um, in 2016, uh, uh 2016, 2017, um, sold me into one of, you know, he, he owned a program before and, uh, I, I trusted the dude with literally the last money in my bank account. Like I'll never forget, they like it was the day before Thanksgiving of 2016, and uh, I told myself like I, I, this is the six. It was maybe it was the 22nd or something, and uh, I needed to make money before the first of the next month because of you know because of um, rent basically. And uh, it was it was literally putting the trust in him and knowing that you know he had my best interest in mind and and making the leap. So. He used a lot of analogies too, so um, so that's that's ultimately what got me in. But but dude, like I said, I, I wanted to say just overall, I appreciate you jumping on here. Um, you know, I think a lot of the stuff that we talked about will be able to help out a ton of people um, as they listen to you know the podcast, as they watch the YouTube video. Um, before we end it though, any any just last uh, last parting words, uh, just overall through this growth, through this development, I realized that you know you're not in it by yourself. I cannot emphasize enough how much the community inside RCA um, helps you stay on track. It helps, it really holds you to the task. Um, I, I don't think that I would have, when I post something on Facebook, like, hey man, I had my first thing uh, inside the private group. When I post inside the private group, there's not, I, I don't have one post that has one like. I don't have one post that was ghosted. You know what I mean? There's 50, 60, 80 people. Thumbs up. Way to go. Uh, hey, a lot of connections. I, I FaceTime and talk to more people than you can shake a stick at. Connections that I've made online that are real tangible people. Um, your coaches. I don't know where you pull this pool from, but it's some talent. It's some talent. And, and Aaron, it's been a pleasure meeting you. Thank you, man. I appreciate you jumping on. And for those of you that are listening to this podcast, uh, whether it's on the podcast app, you know, we're, we're growing it there also on the YouTube channel. So, um, if you got any value out of this episode, uh, at all, make sure to leave a like subscribe, all that good stuff. And, uh, and drop a, uh, a comment saying thanks to, to Jacob here. Cause he, he dropped a lot of, of fire and knowledge for you guys in order to, to take into, you know, your endeavors, whether it is here within RCA or, uh, or not. So down in the description, we'll have all a bunch of other links that will lead to, you know, learning more about the you know the remote closing academy um again it's usually just a video that you watch and if you just watch the video cool and you'll learn some information there but you will have an option to uh, to talk to us a little bit more about what it would like or be like to to work with us and you heard it here um directly from jacob he's uh he's had a pretty pretty decent experience if i do say so myself so um that's going to do it for the first episode of the rca podcast um you know of course subscribe everywhere that you hear podcasts and we'll see you guys on the next episode talk soon peace